Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to today's morning prayer service. It begins on page 42 of our Anglican prayer book. And the readings for today shall be Psalm 35, Isaiah 49, verses 13 to 26, Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. We begin on page 42 of the prayer book. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves his service. Let us praise and worship him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Together we say, O come let us sing, which is found on page 43 of the prayer book. O come let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the, ro to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind and confess our sins to our Lord Jesus Christ and pray for his salvation to ring true in our lives. We pray together saying, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we shall read the psalm, which is Psalm 35. Oppose those who oppose me, Lord, and fight those who fight against me. Take your shield and armor and come to my rescue. Lift up your spear and your ax against those who pursue me. Promise that you will save me. May those who try to kill me be defeated and disgraced. May those who plot against me be turned back and confused. May they be like straw blown by the wind as the angel of the Lord pursues them. May their path be dark and slippery while the angel of the Lord strikes them down. Without any reason, they laid a trap for me and dug a deep hole to catch me. But destruction will catch them before they know it. They will be caught in their own trap and fall to their destruction. Then I will be glad because of the Lord. I will be happy because he saved me. With all my heart, I will say to the Lord, there is no one like you. You protect the weak from the strong, the poor from the oppressor. Evil people will testify against me and accuse me of crimes I know nothing about. They will pay me back evil for good, and I sink in despair. But when they were sick, I dressed in mourning. I deprived myself of food. I prayed with my head bowed low as I would pray for a friend or a brother. I went about bent over in mourning as one who mourns for his mother. But when I was in trouble, they were all glad and gathered rock to, round to, mo uh, to mock me. Strangers beat me and kept striking me. 
Like those who would mock a cripple, they glared at me with hate. How much longer, Lord, will you just look on? Rescue me from their attacks. Save me from these lions. Then I will thank you in the assembly of your people. I will praise you before them all. Don't let my enemies, those liars, gloat over my defeat. Don't let those who hate me for no reason smirk with delight over my sorrow. They do not speak in a friendly way. Instead, they invent all kinds of lies about peace-loving people. They accuse me, shouting, we saw what you did. But you, O oh Lord, have seen this, so don't be silent, Lord. Don't keep yourself far away. Rouse yourself, O oh Lord, and defend me. Rise up, my God, and plead my cause. You are righteous, O oh Lord, so declare me innocent. Don't let my enemies gloat over me. Don't let them say to themselves, we are rid of him. That's just what we wanted. May those who gloat over my suffering be completely defeated and confused. May those who claim to be better than I am be covered with shame and disgrace. May those who want to see me acquitted shout for joy and say again and again, how great is the Lord. He is pleased with the success of his servant. Then I will proclaim your righteousness and I will praise you all day long. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We move to the first lesson, which is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 13 to 36. Isaiah 49, 13 to 36. Okay. To 26, my apologies. <clears throat> okay. Sing heavens, shout for joy, earth. Let the mountains burst into song. The Lord will comfort his people. He will have pity on his suffering people. But the people of Israel said, the Lord has abandoned us. He has forgotten us. So the Lord answers, can a woman forget her own baby and not love the child she bore? Even if a mother should forget her child, I will never forget you. Jerusalem, I can never forget you. I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Those who will rebuild you are coming soon, and those who destroyed you will leave. Look around and see what is happening. Your people are assembling. They are coming home. As surely as I am the living God, you will be proud of your people, as proud as a bride of her, is of her jewels. Your country was ruined and desolate, but now it will be too small for those who are coming to live there. And those who left you in ruins will be far removed from you. Your people who are born in exile will one day say to you, this land is too small. We need more room to live in. Then you will say to yourself, who bore all these children for me? I lost my children and couldn't have no more. I was exiled and driven away. Who brought these children up? I was left all alone. Where did these children come from? The sovereign Lord says to his people, I will signal to the nations and they will bring your children home. Kings will become, will be like fathers to you and queens will be like mothers. They will bow low before you and honor you. They will humbly show you their respect for you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. No one who waits for my help will be disappointed. Can you take away a soldier's loot? Can you rescue the prisoners of a tyrant? The Lord replies, that is, this is, that is just what is going to happen. The soldiers' prisoners will be taken away and the tyrant's loot will be seized. I will fight against whoever fights you and I will rescue your children. I will make your oppressors kill each other. They will be drunk with murder and rage. Then the whole human race will know that I am the Lord, the one who saves you and sets you free. They will know that I am Israel's powerful God. Here ends the first lesson. Um, let us turn to page 46, where we shall recite the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised us for a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. 
through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would have sa- that he would save us from enemies from the hands of all those that hate us he promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant this was the oath he swore to our father abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear the holy and righteous in his sight all the days of his li- of our life you my child shall be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord and prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our god the dawn from on, from on high shall break upon us sorry to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen the second lesson is written in paul's letter to the galatians chapter 3 verses 1 to 14 galatians 3 1 to 14 you foolish galatians who put a spell on you before your very eyes You had a clear description of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Tell me this one thing. Did you receive God's spirit by doing what the law requires or by hearing the gospel and believing it? How can you be so foolish? You began by God's spirit. Do you now want to finish by your own power? Do all your experience mean nothing at all? Surely it meant something. Does God give you the spirit and work miracles among you because you do what the law requires or because you hear the gospel and believe it? Consider the experience of Abraham. As the scripture says, he believed God and because of his faith God accepted him as righteous. You should realize then that the real descendants of Abraham are the people who have faith. The scripture predicted that the that God would put the Gentiles right with himself through faith. And so the scripture announced the good news to Abraham. Through you God will but through you God will bless the whole human race. Abraham believed and was blessed. So all who believe are blessed as he was. Those who depend on obeying the law live under a curse. For the scripture says, whoever does not ob- always obey everything that is written in the book of the law is under God's curse. Now it is clear that no one is put right with God by means of the law because the scripture says only the person who is put right with God through faith shall live. But the law has nothing to do with faith. Instead, as the scripture says, whoever does everything the law requires will live. But by becoming a curse for us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse that the law brings, for the scripture says, anyone who is hanged on a tree is under God's curse. Christ did this in order that the blessing which God promised to Abraham might be given to the Gentiles by means of Christ Jesus, so that through faith we might receive the spirit promised by God. Here ends the second lesson. Now we join together and read the song of the church. which is found on page 47 of the prayer book. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of the prophets praise you. The white-robed army of the martyrs martyr, praise you. Throughout the world of the uh, the holy church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Sorry. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, the Holy Spirit advocates and guide. 
You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of, of the Father. When you become man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Sorry. And bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we, have, we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Dearest brothers and sisters, let us now recite the Apostles' Creed together, which is found on page 48 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We turn to page 50, where we will do the prayers together. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace and let your glory be over all the world. May our hearts be cl clean, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. Together we read the Collects of the Day, which is found on page 51. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assault of our enemies. Then we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we say the morning collect together. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created, by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Now we enter time for the sermon. Today's sermon will be focused on the second lesson, which was Galatians 3, verses 1 to 14. The theme of today's sermon is keeping faith. 
All three readings today seem to follow the same theme surrounding faith. They take us through a journey of the stages of faith within our own lives, starting from the psalm. The psalmist sounds desperate and pleads with God for salvation. The psalmist continuously asks God to intervene in his life because he has done as far as he can. He begins by putting faith in God, believing that God will come and save him. He mentions how he has shown love and mercy to his enemies, to his friends, yet they still plot against him. He has done as much as he can, but now he's exhausted from being persecuted and asks that the Lord comes and takes over. Then prophet Isaiah begins by telling us how Jerusalem has lost their faith. They believe that the Lord has abandoned them. He has forgotten them. But the Lord comes and reminds us that he can never forget them, that he has their names written on the palms of his hands, that he, has, he shall keep his promise to fight all their battles and bring a great victory to them. Much like in our lives, we tend to start off with so much faith, but as time goes by, we start to, our faith starts to falter and we start to take matters into our own hands. We start to struggle to believe that God is still coming to save us. Which takes us now to the book of Galatians, where Paul is frustrated with the church of Galatia because they seem to have lost faith. He begins by asking them, you began by God's spirit. Do you now want to finish by your own power? Dearest brothers and sisters, I'd like us to reflect on a moment in our lives where we too have lost faith and began to take things into our own hands. Where we begin to believe that divine timing is not coming and only through our own efforts can we succeed. Paul reminds us that the only true way to salvation is through faith in Christ, for he has come to fight our battles. He died on the cross to remove the need to follow the law completely. He took on that curse for us and brought us salvation through faith. Paul reminds us that the real descendants of Abraham are people who have faith. And God made his covenant, covenant with Abraham to bring salvation to his descendants. So in order for us to guarantee salvation in our own lives, we must have faith. Paul tells us, only the person who is put right with God by means of faith shall live. He continuously reminds us that the only way to eternal life, to salvation by Christ, is through faith. And we are encouraged to maintain our faith even in trying times, even when it seems like the battle is lost, the Lord is fighting in the background and all we need to do is keep our faith and be patient. Dearest brothers and sisters, I'd like to end the sermon in prayer. So let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you may be patient with us in our times of unbelief and we ask that you may Remind us that only through faith can we reach you. Lord, plant a faith in us, even as small as a mustard seed, so that we may leave all battles to you, for you are the only one who can truly bring us victory. We pray all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we enter into the second part of our prayers. And this is found on page 52 of the prayer book. Blessing and honor and thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, from all angels, all people, all creatures, forever and ever. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you. Yet your, your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you have given us 
and for all the blessings we have received at your hands. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrections have brought, has brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us, and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words, but by the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us. Answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Here ends the morning prayer service. Have a lovely day.